We're going out with Mom to the store now. Gotta go. I really miss you, Dad. Yeah, I know. I miss you, too. I'll send you a picture real soon. There are these amazing clouds up here that look like every shape you can imagine. Bye, Steve. The first concept that we're showing here is this concept of what we call wearable data managers. These are literally ring devices that you can wear. And now actually some of you during the interviews that I had today were asking about what we thought about Beyond Touch, which showed you the touch smarts. The concept behind these are not just data managers, meaning you carry your profile with you, but that you literally use these also as the gesture controls. Rather than having to touch, using hand controls, in order to drive the interaction with the PC or with your device or with your collaboration technology. Now the challenge with anything in the future is the fact that you're going to be interacting with devices that are not your own. The concept being is, is that with the profile, with the profile stored on the device itself, that you can literally carry that profile with you. Everything you need to know about your device or about you is stored in here and you carry it with you at all times. Therefore, any device you walk up to can take on your profile, your needs, your wants, and interact with you, on, you know, as you as you wish. Hey Phil, we're ready to kick off the design room. Why are you about set? I'm already looking over the first set now. Hmm. Clive, can you make some quick changes for me? Make the lines more daring. Turn the look up. So the concept here is, is that there's a fashion show going on. And that there's designers, manufacturers that need to be able to interact and make, and make changes or make adjustments. The concept here is what we call an interactive work service. And the interactive work service concept is around the fact that rather than having the traditional keyboard and screen approach that we see in normal clients, is literally to make it one contiguous surface, such that you have both a physical surface that you can write on and a physical surface that you can display on. And literally, the surface itself is fully interactive, where you can draw on it and you can literally push it to the people on the other side of the collaboration, allowing really for this issues of how do you have these virtual chalkboards? How do you make it such that you feel like you're together and you literally can interact on a real-time basis? This gives you a little bit of a feel for what we think these kinds of multiple surfaces, rather than, again, back to the traditional clamshell keyboard and display, what we think about from the standpoint of how do you make it you know, more tactile, more like you're there as far as the, in the, in the interaction with the other people that you're, uh, that you're collaborating with. So, Annalisa, I'd like you to try this accessory on for fit. I think it could really work. We've got the man for a good selling product. Let's take a look. Part of the challenge with collaboration is, is not everything is digital. Sometimes you got to build atoms. you got to build something tangible that people can touch and that people can interact with. So this is the concept of volume printing. What we mean by volume printing is not just the, the printers that can print out 3D objects. This is literally the ability to extrude the 3D, uh, 3D uh, uh, object, push it back down and have it recreated using uh, a base of uh, resins and, and epoxies such that you literally get a true feel for the end product. This allows for collaboration over very wide distances without the need of having to manufacture and ship. In the case of HP today, in many cases, our designers have to travel to the locations of where our devices are actually being manufactured to test to make sure that the fit and finish is appropriate. This, in an attempt to try to drive collaboration, is to allow for things like being able to see and touch the actual products. So in this case, in a volume printing, the scenario will be to actually volume print a pair of sunglasses that uh, a person can try on and see does it fit and how do they look. Hmm. These are clothes, 
but I'm going to go a bit smaller. Hold on. Perfect. Feel, send a few months of this pair to my Buenos Aires studio and I'll order 100 additional units for my sellers. Hey Dad, I drew your airplane on them. So this is the concept of how do you collaborate from the standpoint of a video experience where you can actually have the live chat not so much from the standpoint of having a traditional PC or just a video camera, but how do you, from the standpoint of embedding the different form factors? Now, this is the concept, literally, of a device that you can sit on next to your PC that can have a video camera in it, you can project your video image, but the other concept is the fact that you can literally hold it in your hand as a slate tablet, and you can also draw on it. The point here is, is that this being a device that's dedicated to what we call strong specific. There's two kinds of devices in the world. There are horizontal devices, PCs that run a variety of applications, and then there are strong specific devices that do a specific function and do them very, very well. In this case, this is a concept for a strong specific device that you can purchase, sit next to your PC, and use it as a way of, of a window of interaction with other people that you need to collaborate with. That's terrific, Sadie. I love it. I'm gonna make it my background right now. But listen, I've gotta go, okay? Sorry to rush. Bye-bye. Bye, Dad. See you later. Thanks for your help, Phil. See you at the meeting later on tonight. That was a productive review. We'll make sure the design team is fully ready for the recap. We've got a lot of work ahead of us. Great feedback, everyone. So the concept here is as you're wrapping up the meeting and from the standpoint of the interaction, you kind of saw the model where everybody could see everybody else, but everybody else is in different parts of the world. Part of the challenge now, though, is, is this issue of time zones. Collaboration exists today. You can collaborate through a variety of technologies. But the challenge today is the fact that if you're in a different time zone, how do you represent yourself in the form of a collaboration? such that you're participating, but you're not physically there from the standpoint of it's not the right time, you've got other priorities, you're sleeping, it's in the middle of the night, which means it's probably prime time in Taiwan. How do you, how do you drive this? So one concept is, is literally the, the concept of an avatar. Now an avatar to today's world is literally just a graphical representation that represents you in whether it be a game or whether it be uh, in Second Life. In this case, what we're really talking about is a real avatar that actually understands what kind of information, what all, everything that's in the system that knows about you from the standpoint of how you act, how you would respond to certain actions or activities, uh, participate from the standpoint of just gathering the information so you can review it later. But literally this, this avatar would represent you. Now in this closing scenario, in this case, he's going to push the avatar up such that the avatar can attend the wrap up meeting, capture the data, so that he can go off and do something else. What he's going to do is something else is actually drop into his favorite game so that he can actually game this and have fun uh, while uh, supposedly he's doing real work. 